You're listening to PetLifeRadio.com. Welcome to Animal Rights on Pet Life Radio. This is your host, Tim Link, and I'm so glad you're with us tonight. My special guest today is author, radio and television host, and animal communicator, the pet psychic, Sonia Fitzpatrick. Sonia will be here talking to us uh, today about her recently released book, There Are No Sad Dogs in Heaven, Finding Comfort After the Loss of a Pet. So we're real excited. It's a great book. We're real excited to talk to Sonia tonight. We're going to get right at it right after these commercial breaks. You're listening to Animal Rights on Pet Life Radio. Sit. Stay. We'll be right back after a short pause. Well, four to be exact. Join the dog ring revolution. If you love your dog and want to take them everywhere you go, now you can with Dog Ring. Dog Ring is a hands-free way to include your dog in more activities and give you the freedom to take your dog almost anywhere. It's a safe and easy way to secure your dog. It clips around trees, posts, and poles in seconds. It's lightweight, portable, and strong. It has a free sliding leash which allows your dog to run around without getting tangled up. Perfect for parks, picnics, barbecues, camping, lounging outside, and furry fun adventures everywhere. Now you can be part of the Dog Ring Revolution. Visit thedogring.com and sign up for our Kickstarter campaign. Registration is now open. Go to thedogring.com. That's thedogring.com. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. Welcome back. Welcome back to Animal Rights on Pet Life Radio. Joining me now is author and animal communicator Sonia Fitzpatrick, the pet psychic. Sonia, welcome to Animal Rights on Pet Life Radio. Thank you so much for having me on. Oh, it's our pleasure. It's always great to uh, hear from you and keep up on what's going on. And I want to hear more about the uh, the premise of the book, uh, There Are No Sad Dogs in Heaven. The reason why I wrote it, Tim, and you'll understand this, is how so many people really, so many people don't know what's happening to their animals or is it time to put them to sleep or, you know, there's so many questions. And then after an animal's passed over into the spiritual realm, you know, I do a reading for them and I usually get the animal, well, always get the animal that comes through. And as you know, they speak telepathically from the spiritual world as well as the physical world. Exactly the same, telepathic communication. So I'm able to tell the people who they're with. Often people that have been in physical human form will come through and um, talk to their relatives. And they usually have the dog or the cat or whatever animal, you know, cows, everything that I talk to. And people get very fond of rats great guinea pigs, rabbits, you know, so, and birds too. So people, you know, it gives them great comfort when they know that the animal is not dead, the only thing that dies is the physical body, and that they go back home to the spiritual realm where they meet with other souls that have been in this lifetime and past lifetimes with them. Exactly. You know, and it's always fascinating because I think you will probably agree with this is us humans, we beat ourselves up so much, especially when we're dealing with uh, death and and the the transition of our animals with all those questions of did we do enough? Did we do it too soon? Did we do it too late? Were they suffering? Did they hate us? All these things. How do you deal with those emotions that are coming through? Because someone's trying to deal with that grieving process, but also they've got all these questions and all this guilt coming through. Yes, they do. And, you know, they always feel guilty if they've had to put their animal down. Or maybe they haven't actually been with the animal when it's died. So there's so many things. But how I deal with it, Tim, I find I get a lot of help from the spirit world. And um, that, you know, the animal comes through and starts to tell me things that only that human companion would know about the life with the human companion. And sometimes the animal will go back right to being a young puppy when they first got him or even if he's been rescued. He tells me the whole story. So once that starts to happen and they can validate it, which they do, other people come through and often other animals that they've lost in the past are over there with them too. So they're all together. So that's how I deal with it, Tim, really. And by the time people have finished the consultation and left the phone, they are in a completely different frame of mind than they are when they first come on. They know that their animal, there's no death. 
Exactly. They're comforted by that fact that you've been able to bring in from the spirit world their past relatives and friends and other animals that have been part of their That's life. Right. Yeah, I find that to be one of the big uh, questions that they ask is, you know, uh, who are they with? What are they doing? Trying yeah. to get a better grasp of what that's all about. When someone contacts you, I know there's a list of questions and you did a great job with the book and listing the questions and tying in real life stories with each of the questions that people have. But what would you say is the most uh, common? The If you had to pinpoint one of those questions, what is the first thing that somebody asks you? You know, always, and you probably find this, Tim, too, does my animal know how much I love him? That's one of the most common questions I get asked. You know, do they know how much I love them? And of course they do, because we're transmitting out night radios, and they're feeling that from our energy, and they know how much they're loved, and they feel it. And of course, animals love that, of course, unconditionally. They're loyal. They're always pleased to see us when we come home. They're faithful. They love us no matter what, and they don't judge us. Yeah, the beautiful thing about animals, isn't it? Yes, unconditional love. Unconditional love, exactly right. When working with uh, people that are going through that grieving process and trying to better understand that as well, are there certain things that they're looking for? Can you, is there a pinpoint? Is it the matter of fact that you've connected someone from the spiritual world that they understand that gives them that sigh of relief? Or is it a combination yes. of all the things? It's a combination, and every case is different. And I think we still grieve. I mean, when my animals go over, that you know, you miss that physical body and that presence and everything about them, their bark, you know, the way they are. We miss that so much, and we have to learn to live without them, and that's the hardest thing. And I am exactly the same, even though I can see into the spiritual world I can feel them and we sense them around us. It's just the physical body isn't there anymore They're in their energy form. But there is no death. And often people, after a while, they start to feel and sense their animals around them and can have wonderful experiences. Like, oh, they feel, you know, that suddenly they're asleep and they can feel their cat jump on the bed and walk over them. And that, you know, the animal is telling them, hey, Mum, I'm still around you and I'm still with you. And they have so many ways of letting their human companions know that they haven't really gone anywhere. They're still there with us and around us. Exactly. So it's up to their human companion to open themselves up to recognize those situations and and those signs. And I think above that is even to accept what they're feeling or seeing. That's right. And also, what's so wonderful too Tim, but the fact that they do reincarnate sometimes. Not all of them do, but some of them do reincarnate back to us sometimes. Yeah, I wanted to ask you about that as well, because I'm a firm believer in that as well. Do you find it's based on each individual animal, or is it if they choose to reincarnate, or is it more of their purpose didn't get fulfilled in that present body they were in, so they had to leave it in order to come back in? Yes, and you know, they come in and they teach us so much. I mean, the animals have taught me everything. When I was a little girl, I was born with a hearing loss, and I couldn't hear humans, and I could always hear the animals. So they actually taught me, you know, their language. So, you know, every time sort of I talk to them, it's like, it's telepathically. I always find that I feel very humbled when I am talking to animals because they are so just wonderful. They've taught me everything I know, and I think I'm so fortunate to be doing what I'm doing and working with people that love animals and, um, you know, and working with their animals too. Yeah, absolutely. Helping, I think it just helps build that better relationship, that better understanding and grows that common heart connection that we have with animals. And I, I see that growing each and every day. I really do. And when they reincarnate back, of course, people will often say to me, but how will I know where he is or she is or or how will I recognize her? Well, you really don't have to because once an animal has lived with you and you go and you're ready to bring another animal into your life and people feel guilty about that too, you know, Mm -hmm. because they Mm -hmm. say, oh, my animal, how does it feel about me bringing another animal in? Well, animals love unconditionally and all they want is for us to be happy. And if some of them want to reincarnate, which they do... There's a number of reasons why they do that, you know, because they're here to learn and to teach us, 
you know, so they don't all come back. You know, some of them do and some of them don't. But the way they come back is they'll wait till you have another animal and then they'll gradually, because they're in their light body and they're just energy, the physical body is very heavy, and they'll just gradually go in and out of that new animal they bought over a period of months, and then they actually settle into the physical body. And sometimes before they've even come here, They've had this, you know, they know that that's going to happen and they've agreed that the animal that's always the red is soul is in the body to get a rescue animal of two or three or four. The soul is already present in the body. That soul, when the time is right for the other soul to go in, will just go back home to the spiritual realm and then the soul will occupy that body. Yeah, that is very fascinating. I love how you explain that as well because, you know, I get that quite often too when communicating with animals yeah. that have transitioned is, you know, what I find most of all is animals will come back and not necessarily to the same people if they fulfill no. their purpose and their reasoning for being with that yeah. person. They may not choose to come back with you and that's not a bad thing. But also, would you agree that they can also come back to other animals that you brought into your life? Can they come yeah. back and just leave simple teachings or imprints with those animals but choose not to to allow their soul to inhabit or come into that body. That's right. That's right. If it does, then, you know, that's all being fixed for them when they're in the spiritual realm. But that can happen too, Tim. Yes, I agree with that. Yeah. Some animals so they can won't. Choose. That's really they fascinating. Because yeah, that. yeah I, I get that. And I loved how you put that. So thank you. That helps me out a great deal as well because it's, uh, you know, you want people to understand that their animal can come back to them, but you don't necessarily have to go out and look for your animal. And in a lot of cases, the animal, they don't care about the body as long as the body fulfills the purpose for why they're That's here, fine. the soul's here. So that animal may not look anything, you know, Jethro the dog may not look anything like Jethro the dog before. And as you know, it will still have its own personal. It won't be identical to the animal they've had. It'll have his own personality, as well as the traits that the animal that passed over has. And, you know, every animal, as you know, has different, like, idiosyncrasies, just like people do, and different things that they do with us. And the personality, too, you know, is often different. But there are certain things where people will say to me, I sort of know my animal is back. It's a feeling they get that an animal that's passed over is back in an animal. I mean, and as you said, a dog may go into a cat form. It may go yeah, into yeah. another physical form, not the one that it's already been in. Exactly, exactly. Well, I won't get into the conversation of can animals come into human form. We'll save that one for a later date because I know that's always a topic of uh, contention as well and, yeah. and, and as well. Well, can you share with us a little bit about maybe one of your own personal experiences? You mentioned an animal, uh, obviously you have many animals and have had many animals in your life. Is there one that comes to mind that actually has touched you and has you been able to communicate once it's into spirit and maybe has stuck around with you for, for many, many years? Yes, and they still do. That's interesting you should say that because I had a cat. 20 years ago called Wellington and he came with me to from England to America and he loved being an American cat as well as an English one and he made friends with raccoons at night and he loved his life here and he loved the heat and um, you know so he sort of came over with me and also my dog came over with me but you have animals certain animals that you connect with in a different way we love them all as much in different ways but there are some animals that you really connect with and I've had many many animals you know nine dogs at a time that I've rescued but I have to say there are certain animals that you have you love them but there's they're more than that they're like a part of you and that's when I believe our souls have been together in many past lifetimes and it doesn't happen that often but I've had three animals in this lifetime that I've connected with, and particularly my Ridgebacks. They have, um, they're just a little different from the normal dogs. I don't know if you've ever re experienced anything, Tim, like that with Ridgebacks. But, you know, I found that Ellie, and I have written Ellie's story up, that when she passed, she had Addison's disease. Mm -hmm. And um, I happened to say to the vet, you know, do you think, you know, it's worth fighting because she was 13 years old. And the vet said, oh, if we didn't think we could cure her, we wouldn't tell you, you know, to bring you. But I had a feeling that she wouldn't last. But she was very, very special in so many ways. And I had such a connection with her. And it was like 
a spiritual connection, Tim, because animals are very spiritual and they communicate on a high level of consciousness. But I felt, you know, the whole time that she was here to help me, and she certainly was, and when she passed from her physical body, I had to rush her in, you know, sort of a few days later, and she was at the vet, spent a lot of time there, got her home, and then I had to rush her in, and she said to me, go home and wait for me to pass, because I'm going to pass, and you'll know when I do. And she gave me the strength, Tim, and my daughter was with me at the time, and this beautiful white spiritual light went right through me, and I felt very calm. And I drove home, and I came here. The sadness was still there, but she gave me the strength to sort of get through it. And um, I was at home, and the moment she left her physical body, she came straight to me, and I could feel her presence. And that dog, even now, she helps me in the spiritual realm. And sometimes when I am trying to find lost animals, I really ask them, you know, ask her to help me with, with that. And she does. She does. So she was pretty special. But I think we all have animals. If we're fortunate enough to have, you know, not many, but, you know, I have had a lot of animals. Most people have two or three I've had, you know, at the moment I've got 13 animals that live with me all rescue and dogs and cats and I rescued a horse off the slaughter trap too. So I've always got a lot of animals in my life. So many come and go. But I have to say there's been that one. And Wellington was very special. He came to America with me when he was, um, he was 17 years old when I brought him here. And he lived to be over 20. And then there was another dog called Sammy who I had as a goose as a girl. And he reincarnated three times back to me, all in different physical forms. And I just knew that it was him. And the last physical form that he was in, he was thrown out of a car and they broke his leg. Mm. And I picked him up out of the road and I rushed him to the vets and we got him fixed and I brought him home. And my daughter said to me, that's your rich back brew come back to you. And I said, you think so? She said, I know so, mother. And when a week later, I looked at his back and his skin had darkened all the way down and he got an actual ridge on his back and it curled just the same as a ridge back that I'd had in the past it had curled. And it curled up at each end exactly the same. And that ridge stayed on him and he was a little sort of um, to our well, crushed terrier. It stayed until the day he died and he died probably about eight months ago, again at the age of 20. Wow. That is amazing. So I, it identified not only could you feel and know that it was him, but actually it gave you some physical signs just as yes, a confirmation physical, as physical, well. Yes, it was, and it was incredible because he was a huge ridgeback and he was always trying to get on my knee. And um, he came back as a small dog, so he was able to get on my knee. He was able to sleep <laughs> with me. He was able to go anywhere and everywhere with me. And, you know, he was just an amazing companion. Amazing companion. Wow, that's and great. Dearly, well, we miss them all, don't we, Tim? But these dearly missed, you know. But I see them in the spiritual world, and they come through. And Wellington, he used to trip me up the whole time when I lived in England. I had a great big old house there. And I would go through the hall, which was a really big old hall with the original stone, black stones on the floor. And he would run straight in front of my feet. And every so often, he does that with me now. And I say, Wellington, I know you're still around me. And thank you, because I love it when you do that. (laughs) (laughs) That is fantastic. All right, well, I'll tell you what, we're going to take a quick commercial break, but then we're going to come back and continue our conversation with Sonia Fitzpatrick, talk a little bit more about the book, uh, There Are No Sad Dogs in Heaven. You're listening to Animal Rights on Pet Life Radio. Sit, stay. We'll be right back after a short pause. Well, four to be exact. I'm not much of a reader, but I do wish I were more well-read. There are so many great books coming out. I wish I could find a way to keep up. Audible.com makes it easy to stay well informed and catch up on your reading simply by listening. Audiobooks from Audible turn downtime into uptime. You'll be more productive and become well read. Now I'm able to catch up on all the great books I've been wanting to read. With Audible, I feel smarter. Pet Life Radio listeners, try Audible.com now and get your first 30 days of Audible Listener Gold Membership Plan free. And get a free audiobook. Choose from over 100,000 titles. To get this great deal, go to audibledeals.com. That's audibledeals.com. 
Hi, this is Tim Link, animal communicator and pet expert and host of Animal Rights on Pet Life Radio. Have you ever wanted to know what your pet is really thinking? Do you want to find out if they truly understand what you're trying to tell them? Ever wish you could build a better understanding and closer relationship with your pet? Well, now you can. Learning to communicate with animals is a four-part on-demand workshop. In the workshop, you'll learn the essential techniques that are necessary to communicate with animals, including what is animal communication, breathing correctly to achieve the perfect state to communicate with your animals at a deeper level, using guided meditation exercises and method to communicate with animals, and how to send and receive information from your animals. So if you're wanting to learn how to communicate and connect with your animals at a deeper level, visit PetLifeRadio.com forward slash workshop and purchase and download Learning to Communicate with Animals. You'll be glad you did. is Brent Atwater, and I'm the Animal Reincarnation Authority. Join me every week on Alive Again, and let me look at your pet's energy to determine if they're going to reincarnate. I'll be able to tell you when they're going to come back and what they look like. So send me your pet's photo and email me your question at brent at petliferadio.com. I'm looking forward to answering your questions on Alive Again. Every week only on petliferadio.com. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. Welcome back. Welcome back to Animal Rights on Pet Life Radio. We're talking to Sonia Fitzpatrick, the pet psychic, talking about her latest book, There Are No Sad Dogs in Heaven, Finding Comfort After the Loss of a Pet. Now, Sonia, the book, you did a great job with the book. I love the stories. I love how you tied in the most common questions with real-life stories. But I imagine it was a challenge trying to narrow down those stories. So how did you go about doing that? Well, I tried to make them all different. And I tried to, you know, I've got so many stories because I've done so many readings over the years that some of them, you know, sort of stayed vivid in my mind. But, you know, for instance, I put one in, is, you know, the lady said, who's looking after my dog? Where is my dog? Are they feeding my dog? So, you know, I explained in that to her that when we pass over into the spiritual realm, we're in our light body, we don't have the physical body anymore, and animals don't need to, you know, eat when they're over there. Mm -hmm. So, and then her sister came through and I could feel my throat off. I saw this lady coming through and um, she had the animal with her in her arms and I could feel my throat and I knew she had cancer of the throat and I said to her, oh, there's a lady here, she's a relative and she's got cancer of the throat and she's holding your baby in her arms and she said, that's my sister, she passed two years ago and she died with cancer of the throat. So that gave her a lot of comfort to know that because some people don't know where they've gone or if they're around them or where they are. And then there's funny stories how, you know, they've reincarnated and, you know, for people to understand that life goes on over in the spiritual realm, there is no death, just the physical body dies. And then we go back home to the spiritual realm where we've reincarnated many times, humans as well as animals. Absolutely. All the stories in the book, I'm trying to help everyone that thinks different ways. People that feel guilty when they put their animal to sleep. You know, oh, I feel guilty about it. Or did I do it too late? Or did I do it, you know, too soon? I don't think, you know, people do it too soon. I think there are more people that do it too late, really. Because it's so hard to let go of that physical body. And as you know, people get closer to their animals and have a greater love for their animals than sometimes people around them. Absolutely. Because a lot of times we spend more time with them. and yes, uh, we do. And we get that unconditional love back. And, and I think you're right. You know, that's a major challenge for people to try to understand. Is it time to let go? Did yeah. I do it too soon? Did I do it too late? And uh, they're looking for something or somebody or the animal to tell them that, hey, now it's time. Yeah, a lot of people, I think, do know when they stop eating or, you know, they're in great pain and they can't bear to see them suffering anymore. It's better if you possibly can to let that animal go a little rather before than later. Yeah. And wouldn't you agree that they also have that sense of knowing? If you trust it, you have that sense of knowing? 
that's your higher self telling you, isn't it, really? I mean, we know everything. I always say to people, if there's something you're not sure of, you know, and you've got two directions to go in and you don't know what that direction to go in, just meditate for a little while, then ask the question and your feelings and emotions will tell you if it's right because you will feel it and you will sense it and then ask the other question and you'll get a different feeling altogether and you'll know which is right. And, you know, our higher self tells us it's just a question of listening to that feeling and emotion because many people still will be guided by their head rather yeah. than their heart. Yeah, open up that heart and trust what you're receiving. I think that's the, the key point behind it. And quit beating yourself up. You know, that's what I tell clients often. You know, if you know you've done everything you can for that animal and you provide them a great life and they've yeah. shown you that you provide them a great life, then trust trust what you're doing and, and know that all is going to be well. And that's, right. that's the key. I had a lady contact me just uh, yesterday. She's lost uh, two dogs in two weeks and they were both uh, unexpected. One was an unexpected illness and the other one was attack from another dog and then it caused some damage to her dog and uh, it passed during surgery. And, and she was convinced that she was doing something wrong, that something recently she yeah. had done. People like to blame themselves, don't they? Mm-hmm. Yeah, they absolutely do. And, and, and really in the case, you know, our animals don't want us to blame ourselves. They just want us yeah. to open our hearts and open our, our minds and accept uh, and connect with them. And that is their karma too. And there are no accidents in life. You know, that's another thing. People think, oh, there's accidents. I had a client, you know, just last week and her husband ran over the cat and he didn't realize he'd run over the cat. And the cat was about eight, nine. And then she heard this meowing, but she didn't recognize the meow. And then she found her cat dead in the garage, and she was absolutely devastated. And I said, darling, when your time's up, you'll go. This was the way he was supposed to go. It's nothing. It's just something. This is karmic. And we learn from it. And often you find that when something does happen with an animal, you get closer together. You do grow closer. Together. I find that an animal can even bring, when it dies, can bring two people much closer than they've been for a very long time. Yeah, absolutely. I think you're absolutely right in that because it, it's like any other living creature, any other living person that's in our life. We grow that heart connection. We grow that connection with them and uh, you go through that same grieving process and you shouldn't feel bad yes, about that. Yeah. Yes. And everybody grieves in different ways. I mean, in the book, there's the stories of the young lady who took the casket to bed for two years because that was the only way she could cope. And a young man who put his cat in the freezer, and then he was away on business, and the freezer defrosted. He'd had an electrical current. And all these stories of how people try to cope after their animal has passed, the comfort, you know, they get from doing these things. Do you ever uh, give clients tips on how to cope with losing of an animal, whether it's a, a ceremony, a, a shrine, a scrapbook, any of these type of things? What I think is so funny, Tim, is that when the animal is passed over and someone's walking around with a casket or they've got a pot on the top by their bed or whatever, the animal finds this very, very funny because it thinks, well, I'm here with my mum. Why is she walking around with that thing in her hand? So that helps people a lot to know that. But I will explain to the animal that, you know, this is a way of feeling comfort and this is the way humans get their comfort because they still feel there's a piece of you here in that physical level. And so people, you know, grieve and they cope with it in all different ways. But usually when I tell people, you know, and I go back into their past and I go back into their life together and we come to that point, you know, that, oh, you know, they'll ask questions. It's not that I give them, I give them a lot of answers in a different way. And the different way is that their animal is still alive and with them and around them. So tips, I don't think, come in. It's just every case is different. And then, you know, it's just that you have to go and do it in your own way. But the animal just finds it very amusing that we happen to keep him in a casket or we buried him. They, you know, buried, they'll often say, where shall I bury the casket? And the animal would tell me, you know, under the tree that I was always peeing up or everything. <laughs> you know, that was my favorite tree and it's in the corner of the garden and he'll explain where it is and the person will say, absolutely right, that's where I'll put him. Everybody is different, aren't they, when they lose an animal, Tim? Uh, Everybody's uh, different. Absolutely, and there's no wrong answers, whatever gives you comfort. No, I know that's right. 
Yeah, the animal's going to honor that anyway. All right, so now I have to ask you, from writing the book, obviously you've written several books. You host the Animal Intuition Show on Sirius XM Radio. You've hosted your own television shows on Animal Planet. Out of all that batch of getting your message out there, what do you find to be the most challenging? What with getting the message out there? Yeah, is it more challenging to write books and write articles and things of this sort, or is oh. it more uh, challenging? Well, if, anybody, if anybody had told me I'd write books, I wouldn't have believed them 30 years <laughs> ago. I would have said that's the last thing I do. But I find it hard when I'm working, which I, I work, you know, all the time. Sometimes I work six, seven days a week because I do a column also. And I find that you know, the, the writing the book was a bit challenging for me because the only time I could write was early in the morning when I first got up. If I got into the day, I couldn't get back and concentrate. So I always had to do it. As soon as I got out of bed and made my coffee in the morning, I'd sit down and write. And I remember the story so vividly. And isn't that amazing? Because I imagine, I, don't, I didn't ask you how old some of these stories are, but I'm sure some of them date back quite a few years. Well, most of them I probably have done over the last, let me see, Last two years. Okay. But it's, uh, I would say from doing it all these years, you probably remember more stories than you would care to uh, even I mention. Do. I do. And, you know, with grief, the reason I wrote the book was because I have so many clients that come to me when they're animal grieving or where are they and all the different stories that I have, you know, even on reincarnation and they know when they come back again to them. And so all the stories I made, tried to make differently, but I tried to cover every aspect of what I deal with when I'm talking with people that have lost their beloved animal, you know, to give people sort of um, the knowledge. And I think a lot of people know this anyway, that their animals around us and with us, they just vibrate on a higher level of consciousness. Right, And um, we can feel and sense them around us, and they're just with us in a different way. And um, to know that there's, when they do go over to the other side themselves, the animal, if it doesn't reincarnate, it, it'll be there waiting for them. And life goes on on the other side, as you know, Tim. Absolutely, and they'll be with them again, so they're with them now, yes. in, uh, in their spirit, their soul yes. is with them now, and they'll yes. be with them afterwards as well. That's right. And the thing about passing over is that they'll be in the same energy form because the thing about missing an animal so much is when we're still in the physical body, we miss that animal's physical body so much. But when we pass over, we'll be in energy form and we'll be in the same, you know, form as they're in. So it'll, it's easier and because they've just loved happiness and joy over the other side. Absolutely. And you'll feel that love Indeed. even deeper. Like you mentioned, it'll grow even deeper once you're there. That's right. That's right. And, um, you know, it's a wonderful place to be. This is where I think all, you know, the hell on earth is here on this earth plane. When we go out of our body, you know, it's just incredible love, peace and joy. I'm always amazed when I'm talking to animals in the spiritual realm, what incredible feeling you get right through your body and you're on a much higher level of consciousness than you are when you're actually back in the physical body and back in the physical world. Because we're going in and out of our body psychics all the time. So, Sonia, after uh, our readers read the book, There Are No Sad Dogs in Heaven, and I will let everybody know it's all animals. It's all animals. So, whether we're talking yes, uh, birds, turtles, cows, horses, cows. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. We all have a, a living soul and it continues on. But after our readers read your book, uh, what would you like for them to take away? What would be the key takeaway point that you'd want them to get? Well, some peace of mind about where their loved one has gone and to understand that their loved one is still around them. And if they don't reincarnate back to them, which many don't, they will eventually be in the same energy form when it's their time to go and be there, they'll be together again. I mean, we're all interconnected anyway. But when we get over there, we're in the same form as they are. So therefore, one day you're going to be not missing that physical body because you'll be in the spiritual realm where it's just love, peace, and joy, and your energy body will be there with them. Exactly. Very well put. So everybody go get a copy of the book, There Are No Sad Dogs in Heaven, Finding Comfort After the Loss of a Pet. Sonia, where can people find out more about the book and about all the wonderful Oh, it's, it's all in, in the bookstores and Amazon.com, and you can download it. And I have Cat Talk, too, which um, if people have cats, it teaches you how to communicate with them and how they speak. And 
So, therefore, I have three books out now, but the new one, as I said, I wrote it because of I find that 70% of my business is usually people who have lost their animal or is just about to pass over or when is it time to let go. So that's why I decided to write the book to try and help people that weren't quite sure about where their animal was or if they were going to see their animal again. That's why I use this collection of stories to help everyone understand that uh, animals are still around us and with us. There you go. So everybody go out and pick up a copy of the book. You did a great job with it. Uh, you can also find out more about uh, Sonia and her wonderful activities at uh, soniafitzpatrick.com and pick up a copy of the book at your favorite retailer or online retailer and pick up her other books while you're there as well. So it's Sonia Fitzpatrick, the pet psychic. Uh, there are no sad dogs in heaven finding comfort after the loss of a pet. Sonia, thank you so much for coming on Animal Rights on Pet Life Radio. It was a, it's a joy to talk Darling, to you. It was an absolute pleasure, Tim. Absolute pleasure. And it was lovely to talk to someone who understands how the animals talk and how, how they work. I mean, that to me was a great joy. Well, I appreciate yeah. that very much. You know, it's all about the animals and uh, helping people with their animals and building those great relationships. So uh, we'll just both keep up the great work. How about that? Yes, we will. You know, <laughs> it's, um, <laughs> we definitely will. And I hope someday we meet, Tim. Absolutely. I'd look forward to that. That would be fantastic. I'd love it. Okay, darling. Well, thank you so much for having me on. Thank you. Thank you. We've been talking to uh, Sonia Fitzpatrick. Pick up a copy of her book, There Are No Sad Dogs in Heaven. It's always a joy to talk to Sonia. So we're coming to the end of the show today. Uh, I'd like to thank everyone for listening to Animal Rights on Pet Life Radio. Thank you to our sponsors and producers for making this show possible. To find out more about me, Tim Link, and the other guests I've interviewed on the Animal Rights Show, uh, you can go to PetLifeRadio.com and click on the Animal Rights icon. Download this episode as well as all the other wonderful episodes. And while you're there, be sure to check out all the other wonderful hosts and shows on Pet Life Radio. There's a plethora of great entertainment and great knowledge there. If you have any questions, comments, or ideas for the show, please email me. You can email me at tim at petliferadio.com. That's tim at petliferadio.com. And I'll be glad to answer your questions, uh, entertain your comments, and bring on the people you want to hear most onto the show. So until next time, write a great story about the animals in your life. Share it in a blog, article, or in a book. And who knows, you may be the next guest on Animal Rights on Pet Life Radio. Have a great day. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand. Only on PetLifeRadio.com.